Wow. Ugh. These are really cheap. Hi, welcome to the channel. This is Beyond Authentic, where our focus is on all things weird and witchy. My name is Lisa, and today's video is another Total Tarot Collection review. This time I'm looking at issues 11 and 12, and this time it's just come in a clear thing with a box. So if you want to see what I got this time around, stay tuned. So for those of you that don't know, the Total Terror Collection is a uh, fortnightly collection that builds. So a bit like one of those sort of build your own sort of magazine binder series. It's exactly that. Um, but basically each fortnight you get half a tarot deck and a magazine telling you a bit about that deck and also just telling you a bit more about tarot, how you can learn tarot, how you can understand it. Now I subscribe to it so I get my deliveries monthly. So basically I get the full deck in one package and two magazines which is always the, the the best way for me to get them now i will say some of you may be surprised that i am still subscribing to this after the harmonious tarot with those horrendously racist cards and the rather mere marseille tarot or the tarot de marseille uh, deck that we got last month um i've got to say both of those decks are still sat over there on the shelves probably going to sit there for a long time i still don't know what to do with the harmonious tarot deck um so yeah let me know all your thoughts down below about what i should actually do with that one anyway we got another free gift this month uh last month as you would have seen we got the tarot journal which turned out to be a rather boring um just a plain notebook not even a lined notebook just a plain notebook with a fancy cover um, and this time round we've got our tarot candles I imagine these are um, uh, it says on the back just says the total tarot collection I imagine these are the candles because to be honest I recognize the box from the freebies yes they are um, okay I'm trying to sniff them when they've got the lids on right so let's have a look we've got the lovers candle it says here oh god it's some really small text I can't read that uh, it says oh the scent is rose oh well, that's not going to be any good for me i don't like rose scented um we've got the empress candle okie dokie i like the empress my favorite card as you all know i've got the empress poster there i've got the empress tarot bag there love 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 the empress um and this one is scented as i think that says jasmine and then we've also got the high priestess and apparently that's lavender so that's what they look like Ooh, that's that's the rose one isn't it I mean, luckily, it's not too rose scented, but that's an artificial rose scent. Um, I've been spoiled recently, having worked with Kirsty at uh, the Kitchen Witch and having sort of looked at sort of handmade candles with really nice organic scents and all of that. This smells like, do you know what it smells like? It smells like cheap moisturiser, a really cheap rose scented moisturiser. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like candles. So we've got the High Priestess and this is a lavender scented okay i wasn't expecting a green stone how is that oh it's a hint the slightest hint of lavender wow they really they they <laughs> these are really cheap i mean i'm not being funny but that's just like the mildest, mildest, mildest lavender there. Okay, actually the Empress one isn't... Again, it's very subtle, but it's not too bad. I mean, again, it's very, it is very subtle, it's very mild. Um, but, you know, they might be quite nice when they're burnt. But it's a freebie, it's a free gift. So we should be grateful. Now listen, if you are one of those people who are going, oh, we can't comment on these because it's a free gift. No, 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 no. The cost of these, the packaging, the printing, all of that is included in your subscription cost. Do not think for one instant they are giving you it this out of the kindness of their heart. They are giving you this as part of your $6.99 or $7.99 subscription cost. But anyway, we don't get the collection for the free gifts. We get it for the tarot magazine and the tarot deck. So let's have a look at what we've got this month. OK, so we've got the next two cards of our golden Art Nouveau tarot deck. Um, this is the most near deck of it. Oh, wow. 
Okay, I mean, first of all, the cards are bent. I don't know whether you can see that. Look at that. Look how warped they are. That's just coming through the post. So, yeah, that's not good. We've got the Three of Cups, which is just a sort of standard Three Maidens design. I mean, that's fine. But this Three of Wands is what made me stop and go, hmm? Um, it's very, very confusing. So that's what the card looks like. But look at this arm. That arm is the way that's positioned makes it look like it's coming towards you and yet the character's walking away. There's just that's really dodgy artwork. Do you see what I mean by that? I mean, again, I like the embossing. I just wish it wasn't on this deck because this deck is just so, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just something and nothing. Um, and again, you can see how flimsy both of these cards have come in warps. Look at that. You can see just how flimsy this cardstock is. It can't even get to you via the post without it being damaged. So, yeah. But then talking about decks, this month we have got the pre-Raphaelite tarot deck. So that's what the box looks like. Now, again, you've heard me say it on many of these, if you've seen any of my other reviews, the low Scarabio boxes that come with these are horrendously poor quality. Um, but that's standard for the low Scarabio decks. It really is. You know, it looks OK. We'll see when we actually get to the deck itself. But I will say, if you are going to use one of these decks from this collection as your regular deck, your best bet is to sillitate this bottom one up because this, in my experience, has already torn with the Thelema deck that I actually do use and I did get in this collection and I do like. Right then, let's look at the magazine first and then we'll come on to the deck themselves. So we've got the issue number 10 or part 10. Um, I mean, this deck looks quite colourful and quite bold, so I do quite like it from from the, the cards that they're showing us. Um, so then, let's have a look. We, the, the magazines are always a bit hit or miss. So we're talking about personality readings. OK, so it says a reader can use the tarot to explore and better understand their own personality and those of their querents, their, the person they're reading for. Now, that's interesting. Um, and it's got this. Oh, OK. So this was the image that we had on the journal. And this is from the uh, the Tarot Illuminati. Surely it should be the Illuminati Tarot. But anyway, the Tarot Illuminati, and this comes in parts 20 and 21. So it's given us a good clear. This is going to be five months down the line. So, you know, stay tuned for this artwork. Um, but OK, right. So, yes, personality um, readings are a thing. They absolutely are. Then it goes on and tells us a few bits about that. So that's really interesting. Um, the card in detail today is the Hermit. OK, now, you know, if you've watched my previous ones of these, you know how much this always makes me giggle a little bit um, and how how wrong I find their card in detail. So let's have a look at the symbols. Right. First of all, we've got a the hood. So it says this element of the hermit's clothing expresses his ability to maintain secret thoughts and renounce his own identity. OK. It's not just because it's sort of monks wear from back in the time when a hermit would wear a cloak and a hood and all of that because, you know, warmth. But fine, fine. Beard indicates the wisdom of old age and the rejection of all forms of vanity. Because, you know, I put a picture here of somebody with a beard. Let me know whether you think all beards reject all forms of vanity. That's all I'm saying. Um, see the lantern. Right. This symbolizes the inner light illuminating the road ahead. The continuous quest for knowledge and enlightenment. OK, that sort of. I often see the lantern as being the knowledge itself, the thing that is passed forward. The the, the deck that I used a lot, the um, Connolly deck, the Hermit literally has two characters, one passing the lamp across to the, the previous, their previous self or their future self, depending on which way you look at it. Um, so that I find really interesting because it is that, that the light of knowledge. So I kind of agree with it there. I know, right? I'm agreeing with one of their definitions. Then we've got the staff. It says like a shepherd's crook, OK, the hermit staff indicates his willingness to lead others. It is also a pathfinder working with the lantern to provide clear visions. Has nothing to do with the fact that the hermit is often depicted as being either on a mountain, as, as this is showing, or in a cave. And therefore, it's a walking staff to literally help you walk. You know, it's a walking stick. But anyway, the cloak. Here we go. 
The hermit's simple clothing emphasises his humility and focus on what lies within rather than outward appearances. Monks, habit, wizards, cloaks, all of the above. Um, the shoes, okay, these indicate karma. What? <coughs> Excuse me. Reminding us that there are consequences to every step we take. Do, do, do you get that from that? that one shoe um and then finally it says here the landscape the desolate environment is a symbol of the hermit's solitude or or it's because he's on top of a mountain but okay i mean i get it i get it i get it i guess um so for me the yes okay so it says here the essential meanings enlightenment and withdrawal i would agree with that i would agree with that i would say the key words for the for me for the hermit it's about sacrificing. It is about enlightenment. It's about putting in the time to, to gain the knowledge that you are going to use in later life. It's about that sort of self-sacrifice to learn something, to look within, to have those deep conversations. Um, then we look at some various different depictions of the hermit um, in various different decks, as always. There. Um, what else have we got? So today's spread, we've got the angelic wisdom spread. OK, or the first one of the angelic wisdom spread. So this is a seven, an eight card spread. So there we go. We're getting into some more detailed spreads. I always find different spreads can be a little bit confusing. Um, it's fine if you've got a particular question that you want a particular answer to. You can, you know, use a particular spread for. But to be honest with you, I, I've got my sort of three or four spreads that I use regularly and I get all the information I need from those. So sometimes these are a little bit, I think, overcomplicated. But anyway, then we go into the tarot deck library, the pre-Raphaelite tarot deck itself. And we talk a little bit about art and magic. And then we've got our ma uh, minor arcada breakthrough as well, or breakdown, I should say. Then the visual reference to the pre-Raphaelite tarot. Oh, no, this is interesting because this used to be on one page. And now it's over two. So maybe they're running out of things. Yeah, and that is the last. <laughs> so I was about to say, maybe they're running out of things to put in the magazine, but that's literally what it is. But OK, let's have a look at the issue 11 then. It'll be interesting to see what they've got in here about the um, free raffle. If they put the minor and the majors in this one, what's going to be left? Right, so we've got the again the lovely artwork on the front cover from the from the deck. Um, intuitive reading two. Okay, in our second guide to intuitive reading of the tarot cards, we will offer readers more techniques and give advice on how to develop the skills of reading intuitively. Okay, we had a few issues back. We had a piece on the intuitive reading. Um, so that's interesting. So it'll be an interesting read to sort of see where it goes from here. And then the card in detail, we've got the number 10 card, the Wheel of Fortune. Again, this Rideaway-esque sort of design really does leave me cold, to be honest. But let's go through it. The Sphinx at the top. Yes, it represents the fateful focus of the unconscious and perceptual change. OK. Uh, B, the letters. The letters T-A-R-O can be read as tarot, tarot, Torah or rota. Interesting. Yes, I, I've always read that as Torah backwards because... That's just the way that that's that I was taught it, basically, is that because the Torah is also in the high priestess card. She holds a depiction of the Torah as well. Um, the Hebrew letters, four Hebrew letters form the Tetragrammatron. Tetragrammaton. I can't say that word ever, um, which is the name of God, which is yod Hey var Hey. OK, so that's the letters going around as well. Um, if anybody ever practices the lesser banishing, the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, you use the um, you, you use the yod hey vav hey uh, alachim. You use that in that ritual. So, yeah, uh, the wheels and symbols. Okie dokie. So it says the symbols for mercury, sulfur, salt and water can be seen. The wheel itself indicates the cyclical nature of fate and fortune. So, again, we're talking about this very specific image, this very specific sort of sigil, if you like, or symbols on the on the on this particular card. The snake. It says the snake embodies destruction and symbolizes the balance of creation. Uh, sorry, creative and destructive forces. OK, um, the Anubis. Anubis is the Egyptian god of the dead and indicates the mastery of fate over death and of death over fortune. 
Okay, and in the figures, we've got the Tetramorph, Guardians of the Four Directions, and Defenders Against Chaos. That's these four, these four winged creatures up here. So we are talking again about the Wheel of Fortune. Now, for me, the Wheel of Fortune is about opportunity, but it's also about risk. So those two things, those sort of two sides, what does this say? It says revolution and repetition interesting it says here upright one of the, the these are the meanings it gives uh the wheel of fortune the the beginning of a cycle the call of destiny a reminder of life's ups and downs changing fortune passing time nothing lasts forever karmic destiny external forces and unforeseen events the reversal apparently means blockages in energy a run of bad luck something must be removed disruption of natural cycles i would agree with that last bit sometimes for me the wheel of fortune reverse can mean a blockage in the natural flow of things but then we've got the second part of the angelic wisdom spread part two okay um the equilibrium spread apparently for uh for experts so interesting i might have a look at that later um tarot deck rituals number two so then we're talking more about the rituals and what you're supposed to do with it interestingly we've got two um uh empress bits there the, the pouch that i've got just sat here on the backdrop um and the the deck from the uh, radiant wise spirit the rider Waite smith clone um so yeah so that's interesting oh there's a tarot tip are you ready for a tarot tip it says you can perform a ritual after a reading release your querence energy with a prayer for example or ground yourself by connecting with the earth or channeling through each of your chakras or ringing a bell you know whatever um Oh, now this is interesting. Now, sometimes there are some interesting things in these magazines. So now we're looking at the printing dynasties. So we're looking at the way that it was printed and the way that it was done throughout the years. So it was originally done with woodcuts and leather cuts and copies, which is why when you get eventually to, you know, the the 15th copy of a copy of a copy or the you know 300th copy of a copy of a copy, you lose a lot of the details. Um, so yeah, so that's interesting. We've got some variations on the Marseille tarot, and then we've got oh okay, more about the blooming um, Pre-Raphaelite tarot again. More over two pages this time because clearly it was now over four more pages. So clearly it wasn't enough before just for that one page. And then that's it for the magazine. So a couple of interesting bits. Do I think the magazines are worth it? No. Are you buying these for the magazines? Probably not, unless you are an absolute beginner. If you are somebody who's buying this collection to learn tarot, I imagine you're quite frustrated at this point because you would have been collecting this from the beginning. It's now five months on and we've only really had a look at the first 11 uh, cards in detail. So if you're trying to kind of get to know each of the cards, you're going to have to wait almost until you've got the full set to then get those cards in detail. And that just seems a bit pointless doesn't it but i do think that the way this is laid out is a little bit strange as i say five months on and if you are somebody completely new to tarot if you're just going by what's in here i don't think you've got enough information to really start reading properly yet because it hasn't gone through those cards in detail it hasn't gone through what all the reversals are and all of that so but anyway those are my thoughts on the magazine let's have a look at the deck shall we hi this is lisa you're watching beyond authentic weird and witchy don't forget if you haven't already hit that thumbs up button it really helps us out with youtube's algorithm and then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ding your bell and make sure your settings are changed to all that way youtube should notify you each and every time i upload a video but if you would like to support myself and this channel just a little bit more you can always go across to buymeacoffee.com forward slash beyond authentic where you can in fact buy me a coffee that's also where full details of our brand new coffee club crew channel memberships are including members only content and exclusive perks thanks so much for those of you choosing to support me okay i've just sat a little bit forward just so i can see the deck and give you my my first impressions if you like so we've got the two top cards we've got the one from the total terror collection and we've got the sort of pre-raphaelite one this was sort of the one the top card really that comes with the standard deck i quite like the fact that you get both it means you can kind of protect your deck um, front and back um i as i say i am missing the little white books i do really think even if they put it as a download you know i do really miss 
having that little guidebook. But anyway, let's go through this. So the fall, quite a standard fall image, really. Um, in this case, oh no, they are holding the flower. Yeah, quite a dandyish fall, but I quite like that one. I do like that artwork, I think. I think I like the artwork. The backs are interesting. I'll just show you the backs first of all. So it's almost reversible. If they moved one of these owls to the bottom corner and reversed it, then it would be the same which way up. But with these owls, there's only the two of them and they're facing upright. You'll be able to tell whether it's an upright or reversed meaning um which i find a little bit weird but anyway that's fine like the fall so the magician oh i like we've got a female magician oh i like i like that a lot actually yes so that's really cool i like that it's got all the um the tools there and everything the high priestess again i lo i'm liking the artwork on this deck that's the high priestess it's got the standard sort of imagery with the pillars in the back, but this time it's just a little bit, I don't know, it's just a little bit tweaked, isn't it? I like that. The Empress. Oh, now this is, as you know, she's my favourite. She's my card. Um, let's have a little look. See then. So we do have, I think she's holding the orb and scepter. She's got the crown. She doesn't really come across as quite as warm as I would like for the Empress. I mean, she's very rich, very sort of like... You've got all this sort of very wealthy looking about about her um, and arguably the gold embroidered sort of fabric that she's wearing could be reminiscent of the wheat. Um, so, yeah, you do kind of have the imagery, I guess. Oh, no, she's holding a wheat sheaf there. Look behind her. You can tell I'm looking at this for the first time. Um, yeah, I mean, not my favourite depiction of the Empress, but I do quite like all oh, the Emperor's nice. It's giving me Peter Dinklage vibes. It really is. Look at that. I quite like though. Does there is there any? No, there's no um, there's no keywords or anything on these. Uh, the Hierophant. Okay. You've got the standard sort of imagery. It, you've got that sort of Christian element there with the dove, but you know that is sort of what you expect with that sort of papal element of the Hierophant. The Lovers. Now this is an interesting card. This is an interesting card. I mean, arguably, I was about to say, we don't really have the devil, but we do have a burning bush. And not just saying that because she's naked, but we do have a burning bush there. We do have, you can see just there in between the uh, the legs of a couple there. Look, just there, you can see an angel reflected in the sunlight. But that's a really nice image, actually. I like that. Uh, the chariot. OK, I mean, not as sort of special for me. Um you know, it's fine. Strength is an interesting one. She really is laying down on that lion. Look, and that lion's very placid. Quite like, I quite like this deck, I think. The hermit's interesting. Very much a king. Wow. Now, this this is giving me we three kings of Orient, uh, one on a scooter, one in a car, whatever it is. Um, Look, that really is giving me sort of the three wise men from the, um, the Jesus story. The, you know, it really is giving me that sort of vibe about it. Um, the wheel, not the wheel of fortune, but the wheel. Interesting. In, again, interesting, interesting twist. Look, an interesting twist. I do quite like these. There's something because it's that pre-Raphaelite sort of imagery. There's something almost Monty Python-esque about it, which I actually quite like. There we go. What's this one? Justice. The all-seeing eye there in the background what is the Illuminati. Look, they are watching. I mean, that's quite interesting, isn't it, for the Justice card. The Hanged Man, again, interesting. Wow, OK. I like this deck, you know. Look at that Hanged Man. You can see there is the tree, because here's the, the root of the tree. Um, but the tree has become a window or a sort of arch, really. I mean, just fascinating differences. The, the next card we've got is Death. We saw that one. Look at that. It's given me Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds with the Kylie Minogue song that they did. They call me the Wild Rose. Look at that. It's straight from that video. I know this obviously probably came first. It's probably, you know, it's pre-Raphaelite, but yeah, probably. Um, temperance, again, very standard temperance. I've yet to see any temperance cards that are really out there. Um, it's all just a sort of a slightly different artwork version of the same card, really. 
The Devil next. That's a very interesting card. Again, look at that. A very interesting depiction of the Devil. Um, you've got the two figures there, but this time they have uh, tails. And do they have cloven feet? It looks like they may well have cloven feet. So even the couple here on the Devil card. Um, but we do have the promise of maybe riches with this sort of golden town or castle in the background i mean interesting 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 the tower again quite a standard sort of just the the standard imagery of the tower really but in a pre-raphaelite version the star again very very standard imagery but with that sort of pre-raphaelite image the moon now i quite like this this is a little bit different a little bit different for the moon again quite quite like that i do like this artwork i think i think 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 i like it the sun is kind of taking that Rider Waite Smith element and giving it a slight twist. Not major, but you can see the elements are the same. Quite often with the Rider Waite, we see the white horse. We see the sun glowing in the background, sometimes with or without the Teletubbies face. And then the naked child running. So that new life. Um, I quite like the way that's actually brought together. And I like the rainbow-esque sort of... It's It's... It almost looks like a mandala effect, doesn't it, around the sun? That's really pretty, actually. I like that card. Judgment. Now, this is just a standard version of Judgment, but this time the um, the 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 spirits rising up for or the death dead rising up, being called by Judgment from heaven. The um, they, this time they are naked figures. They're not sort of astral figures. They are very naked humans. Um, and then finally we have the world. Now, interesting. They've they've put her in a bit of a bed sheet this time around. Um, but quite interesting. I mean, there's a couple of sort of almost Masonic images there. Um, but now I quite like. I do quite like. I don't know why they've covered her up with this sheet when we've got naked figures in, in some of the other cards. But anyway. <laughs> So that's the major arcana. We'll have a quick look through the minors, but I'm not going to stop really into too many details on the, the minors. That's the Ace of Cups. I mean, she is very, very beautiful. Again, it's a very white deck. I've got to say that once again, with the low Scarabio decks, there's not a lot of diversity. Now, it could be argued that we're going for pre-Raphaelite imagery, and a lot of the pre-Raphaelite imagery was very, very white, very, very sort of this standard sort of rosy-cheeked, you know the the ringlet hair a very european sort of based design i mean this almost looks like it's sort of this gives me italian sort of vibes in the background um and it, it, you know that is that is an argument really to say about that however this is a new deck so even if this was using sort of pre-raphaelite sort of artwork of the time you could adapt it you know what i mean this has been adapted into a tarot deck my my suspicion is that this is just a new deck or a relatively new deck in the pre-raphaelite sort of style now if that's the case there is absolutely nothing stopping you adding different um, body types, people of colour, depictions of disability. You know, you don't have to stick rigidly to this. Pre-Raphaelite is white, largely blonde or red-headed, rosy cheeks. It doesn't have to be just that. You can bring it into a more modern sort of feel while still keeping this pre-Raphaelite design. Now, if on the other hand, this is based on existing pre-Raphaelite artwork, which the more I'm looking at these decks, especially the miners, I don't think it is. But if it's based on actual artwork of the time, the argument is you could still do that because this is not taking, you know, this is not a, a, a historic piece of artwork that you're just slapping the name of a tarot card on. You are adapting it so that these figures are holding, you know, pentacles or, or cups or whatever it is. Um, so in that case, you know, if we are sort of looking at that from that perspective, then again, it's a new version of a deck and it's a new version of pre-Raphaelite artwork. You can make those changes if it was wanted and if the people behind this thought that diversity was something of value. And I, again... I question whether that is ever going to be the case. Um, luckily, I don't think I've seen anything majorly um, offensive in this deck so far. Not that I've seen anyway. Um, in terms of sort of depictions of people of colour, like the Harmonious Tarot deck did. But I do think, um, you know, it's it's just very, very white. And the more you look through it, it's more obvious. 
you know, if you, if you wanted to, there is no reason why you have to stick to this rigid sort of formula just because you've got a pre-Raphaelite style deck. I mean, what would it hurt to have this person have a darker skin tone? It wouldn't hurt anything at all. You've still got that same imagery. You've still got that same artwork. And I think it is something where these, these cards are not only missing a trick, but even just from a perspective of you know, people having a more positive opinion of the, the collection or a more pub, uh, positive opinion of the publishers, it, it, it would just sort of see, you know, we are more inclusive. And I, I just think it's missing and it's noticeably missing. Um, but anyway, you've heard me bang on about this in other decks, so I'm not going to keep harping on about it because I'm sure you'll all get very, very bored. But if you are aware of any really, really good diverse decks diverse in terms of ethnicities sexualities body types disabilities um depicted if you are aware of some decks that are kind of what i'm looking for in a, a modern tarot deck then please do let me know down in the comment section below um the fourth ones now this is interesting because she's just walking around with a dress with her boobs out you know for for no reason just with with a child walking around with her boobs out um it gives me um oh what was it in game of thrones the one where they had that circular hole in the floor and she was still breastfeeding her child even though he was about 11 or something do you remember i don't remember who it was but i just remember that gave me that sort of that element um so yeah i mean you know it's kind of standard really i, th I thought she was holding a gun then but it's obviously just a wand i mean you know again more more sort of naked and semi-naked women um this doesn't okay i mean i i don't i i don't know i don't know what it, this is all depicting this is why we need a little white book this is why we need something to go through the cards and actually or a guidebook to actually tell us what the cards are in a bit more details um again more bosoms more bosoms on show i mean don't get me wrong i am i am i am a free the nipple supporter i absolutely am that's an interesting card actually that two of swords is really interesting look at that blind justice that comes in a couple of times on quite a few decks so it is kind of something to be aware of the three of swords quite often you see they're going through the heart oh this time it's going through the head interesting see i would love to know more about this and about sort of the the thoughts behind the deck um but there you go we've nearly come to the end of it now do let me know all your thoughts and feelings about this deck down in the uh down in the comment section is this something that you're intending on picking up to get the the two parts have you subscribed or have you cancelled your subscription let me know down in the comments all your thoughts and feelings if you haven't already this is a perfect time to hit that subscribe button and then ding your bell so that youtube notifies you each and every time i upload a video but that is just about it for me as we're ending on the king of swords and as i always say stay you stay true stay authentic and I will definitely see you on the next one. Take care.